Please support me by like, subscribe, and sharing my casts. Follow my social media at Facebook, Instagram, Gab, Parlor, BitChute, and YouTube. Or you can join my Patreon. You can also make a donation in PayPal. I am a listener-supported show, so any of the above is greatly appreciated. Help me grow and spread truth since the mainstream media does not support truth. All links are listed on the description box. May God bless you and enjoy. Welcome to the Speak Uneasy, a safe space where cancel culture does not exist because we are in a different prohibition era. Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Speak Uneasy. And I am the bartender tonight. So let's go ahead and start off with the random Bible read for the night. We are at John, the book of John, chapter 2, verse 13 through 25, the first Passover. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep, and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto into them, unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name, when they saw the miracles which he had did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew that was in man. Once again, that was from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 25, the first Passover. So, <clears throat> my understanding about this particular read, um, when he was telling, when he came back to Jerusalem and he went into the temple and he was baffled about all these people using the church, or the temple rather, as a marketplace, he got really pissed. Jesus got really pissed and he told them that he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days and I think the Jews took him literally when he was speaking in he was speaking in parables so I've, I, I I'm not I haven't been studying too much into Christianity even though I've I was recently baptized a couple of months ago as as a Christian, but 
my understanding about churches or the temple, we are the churches, we are the temple. It's not a particular place to go and worship. It is us giving praise, praying to the Lord. That is my understanding of what the church is. The church is us. We are the church. If we, when we congregate, everybody in the community, when they con when they congregate and pray, that's what makes us a church. So that's my interpretation of the read. Um, a lot of it too is uh, I was watching, I was watching the uh, the Bible, the TV series, the Bible. It's a great, it's a really good um, TV series to watch. If you needed to get a little bit of generalization about how the Bi what the stories of the Bible, so that's my random read for the night. So, <clears throat> as many of you know, can, you can figure it out by now that the sound quality of my of my show tonight is not normal. So again, I'm out in the road. I'm working. Um, I've been stuck in California for about a week. I've been stuck in California for about a week and I still got about a few more days to go till I can go home. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be here during the election and I am kind of worried. Well, I wouldn't say I'm worried, but I am concerned that things may not go smoothly here in this state back where I'm at, where I'm supposed to be going, where, where I live, uh, I'm not so much um, concerned only because the governor has stated that he would um, deploy the National Guard if things go out of hand. So that kind of puts me a little bit at, at ease um, that my family is not in imminent danger. So, uh, and not only that, but um, we are a pro Second Amendment house, and uh, I am not worried, as my oldest son and my wife have trained, both with weapons and also through the years in martial arts. I am not a, uh, I am not worried for them as much as I would be if we were still here in, in California. But um, I think I may have a first-hand account on what may happen tomorrow. Um, one day I can, I can discuss that. But as for now, um, I will not go into details about that kind of stuff. But anyways, um, the drink for the night. It's good. Tonight is, it's been a really long week for me. And it's one of those days where I am just going to drink a, a peated scotch neat. It's been one of those weeks. So I have with me a bottle of a Balmore 12 year. Um, and it says here, um, our signature distillery style of peat smoke. Citrus and vanilla perfectly balanced at 12 years old. And this is a this is an Isle single malt scotch. And I am going to have a pour. I'm, I'm going to have a pour of this neat tonight. That's about a double. If you're not familiar with the verbiage, double means two about two ounces and that's a double so here you go slanjava okay the peat not not so strong and i've had i've had lafroig before and that the peat in that is really strong now the peat in this Mm. It's very balanced. So, on the nose, 
I do get a vanilla. I get that wood, the oak. Okay, take a sip again. So the initial, the initial taste I get is from the peat. And then what follows after that is the wood. The oak, I get the oak. Let's see. I do get the vanilla and it's hard for me to describe because I just ate dinner too. So, but, uh, but, but the first initial taste that I get and the smell that I get, the smell I get the vanilla, I do get the oak. Also on the taste, I get the vanilla and I get the oak. So that's all, that's all I got. All right. So that is the Balmore 12 years. Cheers. Now for tonight's topic. So today is Monday, November 2nd, which means tomorrow would be November 3rd, which in turn would be the official election day for the for it's election day tomorrow and we've got president trump who's running for re-election and on the other side we have sleepy joe so my take on the elections i really think that it, it's going to be an i i know I know who's going to win this election. We, if, if you've been paying attention to the rallies, the, you know, just, just the attendance and rallies and all these polit political things that's, that's been going on with the scandals and all these things, I think everybody has a good idea who's going to win this, win this election. Here's my concern. So, if Biden wins, it's going to be bad. If Trump wins, it's going to be bad. Now, which one would be the lesser of two bads? The lesser of two bads would be if Trump, if, if Trump won. That would be the lesser of the two because... Because my take on it is... Even though we have these extreme communists out there who are going to terrorize people after the election, after it's announced, if Trump wins tomorrow, even though we have these people who are going to be out there, um, you know, pretty much destroying, trying to destroy whatever city they're at. It's not going to be a long time for it's not going to be a long time for this to to end. It's going to end real quickly. So So my take is that if 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 Trump wins the left they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to try to destroy these cities, these neighborhoods they're gonna go in suburbia. Um, they're gonna go to all sorts of places, and they're gonna try to destroy neighborhoods, especially conservative neighborhoods. But I think that it'll be tamed down real quickly. 
because uh, our president promises our safety and every every promises that he he has made he has kept i would say not all but the majority of his promises he he has kept i think he's currently trying to work on on the biggest one of the biggest promises which is to drain the swamp he's working on that right now i think it's difficult for him to drain it only because he himself is surrounded by a lot of swamp creatures and i understand that that's part of the playing the game in there is that he have he has to have these people in there and the only way that more swamp creatures um expose themselves um then you can it'll be it'll, it'll be easier to figure out who who needs to be punished for whatever whatever thing they're doing uh to stop freedom and liberty so that's that is the lesser of the two now the reason why i think that the if if biden wins the only reason why i think that that would be even worse is because for one we don't have we don't have the president who stands up for freedom and liberty and justice if if it's biden and we all you know everybody would know everybody who has voted for trump would know that it, it was a rigged election and they cheated right um and i think that a lot of conservatives or people who have voted for trump who's aware of what's going on i don't think they're gonna take that line down i honestly think that that would spark that would spark a major civil unrest and knowing knowing that the majority of trump supporters are very pro second amendment that is not going to go very well with with um with 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 the uh the left the people on the left antifa blm whatever here's where i have a problem too so if biden wins a big civil unrest happens now biden he's gonna he's probably gonna call the un to come in right and when the un comes in it won't be the U.S. military because um, you know a lot of people in the military they're not gonna they're not going to they're not gonna kill their own people. It's gonna be foreign soldiers that come into this soil that will take care of that problem. That's just my opinion. So the UN is a, it's a it's a globalist organization, right? Joe Biden and his and his swamp creatures they're all globalist. Um. So who's to stop them? Hence, their agenda 21 will come true. I mean, this is already starting with the this this is this year has was supposed to be the beginning of the end of freedom as we knew, as we know it. But fortunately for us, we have a president who's a nationalist who loves this country, who loves America, and loves the ideas loves the idea of america he loves freedom he loves liberty just like every other just like every like trump voting citizen out there does and the reason why i say trump voting citizens because people on the left even though the scandals are coming out about biden's son they don't care they've been brainwashed they are pretty much they are pretty much um, communists at this point. And I don't know what it is about these young people who really want this to come true. They want communism to come true. Um, they don't, you know, they'd be the first ones to actually, the useful idiots would be the first ones to go if, if, this, if it ever happened. And I don't think they realize that. So that that's what i think would happen if biden won the election i think that there will be major civil unrest possibly a civil war then we're going to have the un come in and their troops will be the ones to be firing at us 
or trying to kill us. And that's just my opinion from all the research that I've done. Um, it, and it only makes sense because a lot, you know, Amer American soldiers, they're not going to kill their own people. They're, they're for a lot of them are not. They're not. So that's my take on what would happen with the between the two elections it's both gonna it, either way it's gonna be bad and I've, I've already discussed this in a couple shows already i think i've discussed this on my either my pilot show or my first show i think i've discussed this in other shows as well that it doesn't matter who wins it's going to be bad to the to the degree of how bad it will become is determined on who would who's gonna win this election but um i i'd rather have trump win and we deal with these these uh commie criminals right away we'll deal with them and justice will be served real fast because we have a president who's willing to enforce the laws of the constitution and um it also could be a possibility that um the insurrection act of 1807 can be um can be um enacted so if you're not familiar with the insurrection act let me uh let me explain what the insurrection act of 1807 is and this is from wikipedia the insurrection act of 1807 is a united states federal law um 10 usc two uh i don't know what that is two, 251 through 255 prior to 2016 um, 10 USC, I don't know what those symbols are. It looks like two S's. 331 to 335 amended 2006, 2007. Okay. Um, the Insurrection Act of 1807 is United States federal law that empowers the President of the United States to deploy U.S. military and federalized National Guard troops within the United States in particular circumstances, such as to suppress civil disorder insurrection and rebellion bam that's what i was just talking about about if 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 trump wins he's it's a good possibility he may enact this um he has had many chances to do um executive orders on certain things but he's the type of dude who doesn't want to go to extreme he wants things to be uh progressively like to progressively work before he goes to the most extreme thing let me continue reading the act provides a statutory expectation to the posse comitatus act of 1878 which limits the use of military personnel under federal command for law enforcement purposes within the united states before invoking the powers under the act 10 usc 254 requires the president to first publish a pro proclamation ordering the insurgents to disperse. As part of the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878, these provisions are now codified as, amend as amended. There are constitutional expectations to Posse Comitatus restrictions rooted in the president's own constitutional authority. The Defense Department guidelines describe homeland, in quotes, Homeland defense as a, in quotes, constitutional exception to posse comitatus restriction, meaning the measures necessary to guarantee national security from external threats are not subject to the same limitations. And that is the Insurrection Act of 1807. And I do think that if he's pushed back to a corner that, yeah, he would definitely enact the Insurrection Act of 1807. So let, let's go ahead and talk about these times right now. So as, as many of you have listened, you already know that I think that this is, this is the time of a spiritual war. And I, I, truly believe that we are in times of a very spiritual war um there is a letter that was sent to the president on october 25th and this was from 
uh, this man named Archbishop Vigano. And I will read the letter that he wrote to the president. Pardon me as I take a sip. Oh, I'm beginning to get that citrus now. Okay, so it says here, open letter to the President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. Dated Sunday, October 25th, 2020. Sol Solemnity of Christ the King. Mr. President, allow me to address you at this hour in which the faith of the whole world is being threatened by a global conspiracy against God and humanity. I write to you as an archbishop, as a successor of the apostles, as the former apostolic nuncio to the United States of America. I am writing to you in the midst of the silence of both civil and religious authorities. May you accept these words of mine as, quotes, the voice of one crying out in the desert. As I said when I wrote my letter to you in June, this historical moment sees the force of, forces of evil aligned in a battle without quarter against the forces of good. Forces of evil that appear powerful and organized as they oppose the children of light, who are disoriented and disorganized, abandoned by their temporal and spiritual leaders. Daily we sense the attacks multiplying of those who want to destroy the very basis of society, the natural family, respect for human life, love of country, freedom of education and business. We see heads of nations and religious leaders pandering to this suicide of Western culture and its Christian soul while the fundamental rights of citizens and believers are denied in the name of a health agency, oh, I'm sorry, a health emergency that is revealing itself more and more fully as instrumental to the establishment of an inhumane, faceless tyranny. A global plan called the Great Reset is underway. Its architect, is a global elite that wants to subdue all of humanity, imposing coercive measures with which to drastically limit individual freedoms of those of entire populations. In several nations, this plan has already been approved and financed. In others, it is still in an early stage behind the world leaders who are the accomplices and executors of this infernal project. There are unscrupulous characters who finance the World Economic Forum and Event 201, promoting their agenda. The purpose of the Great Reset is the imposition of a health dictatorship aiming at the imposition of liberty I can't. It's it's dark right now, people, so just don't mind me if I get stuck in reading. Libertaricidal measures hidden behind tempting promises of ensuring a universal income and canceling individual debt. The price of these concessions from the International Monetary Fund, that's a bad organization, will be the renunciation of private property and adherence to a program of vaccine against <laughs> Charlie Victor 19 and Charlie Victor 21 promoted by Bill Gates with the collaboration of the main pharmaceutical pro groups excuse me beyond the enormous economic interests that motivate the promoters of the great reset the imposition of the vaccination will be accompanied by the requirement of a health passport and a digital ID. <sighs> this is sounding like accepting the mark of the beast. Uh, with the consequent contact tracing of the population of the entire world, those who do not accept these measures will be confined in detention camps and pla or placed under house arrest. 
and all their assets will be confiscated. People, this really sounds like the mark of the beast. Mr. President, I imagine that you are already aware in some countries the Great Reset will be activated between the end of this year and the first trimester of 2021. For this purpose, further lockdowns are planned, which will be officially justified by a supposed second and third wave of the pandemic. You are well aware of the means that have been deployed to sow panic and legitimize draconian limitations and individual liberties, artfully provoking a worldwide economic crisis. In the intentions of its architects, this crisis will serve to make the recourse of nations to the Great Reset irre irreversible thereby giving the final blow to a world whose existence and very memory they want to completely cancel. But this world, Mr. President, includes people, affections, institutions, faith, culture, traditions, and ideals. People and values that do not act like autom automatons, who do not obey like machines, because they are endowed with a soul and a heart because they are tied together by a spiritual bond that draws its strength from above, from that God that our adversaries want to challenge, just as Lucifer did at the beginning of times with his own non, uh, with his, in quotes, non servium. Many people as well, as well know are annoyed by this reference to the clash between good and evil and the use of apocalyptic overtones, which according to them exacerbates spirits and sharpens divisions. It is not surprising that the energy, or I'm sorry, the enemy is angered at being discovered just when he believes he has reached the citadel he seeks to conquer undisturbed. What is surprising, however, is that there is no one to sound the alarm. The reaction of the deep state to those who denounce its plan is broken and incoherent, but understandable. Just when the complicity of the mainstream media had succeeded in making the transition to the New World Order almost painless and unnoticed, all sorts of deceptions, scandals, and crimes are coming to light. Until a few months ago, it was very it was easy to smear as Quote, conspiracy theorists, those who denounced these terrible plans, which we now see being carried out down to the smallest detail. No one up until last February would ever have thought that in all of our cities, citizens would be arrested simply for wanting to walk down the street, to breathe, to want to keep their businesses open. to want to go to church on Sunday, yet it is happening, yet now it is happening all over the world, even in picture postcard, Italy, that many Americans consider to be a small, enchanted country with its ancient monuments, its churches, its charming cities, its characteristic villages. And while the politicians are barricaded inside their palaces, promulgating decrees like Persian set satraps. Businesses are failing, shops are closing, and people are prevented from living, traveling, working, and praying. The disastrous psychological consequences of this operation are already being seen, beginning with the suicide of desperate entrepreneurs and of our children, segregated from friends and classmates, told to follow their classes while sitting at home alone in front of a computer. This is kind of sad. In sacred scriptures, St. Paul speaks to us of, quotes, the one who opposes the manis manifestation of the mystery of iniquity, the Kathion, Kathikon, uh, second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. In the religious sphere, this obstacle of evil is the church and in particular, the papacy. 
I've known this already. I've known that I've already known that the papacy was involved in being the Antichrist. In the political sphere, it is those who impede the establishment of the new world order. It is now clear that one who occupies the chair of Peter has betrayed his role from the very beginning in order to defend and promote the globalist ideology, supporting the agenda of the deep church, who chose him from its ranks. Mr. President, you have clearly stated that you want to defend the nation, one nation under God, fundamental, fundament, fundamental liberties and non-negotiable values that are denied and fought against today. It is you, dear President, who are the one, the one who opposes the deep state, the final assault of the children of darkness. For this reason, it is necessary that all people of goodwill be persuaded of the apocal importance of the eminent election, not so much for the sake of this or the political program, but because of the general inspiration of your action that best embodies in this particular historical context. That world, our world, which they want to cancel by means of the lockdown. Your adversary is also our adversary. It is the enemy of the human race who is, quotes, a murderer from the beginning. Book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. Around you are gathered with faith and courage those who consider you the final garrison against the world dictatorship. The alternative is to vote for a person who is manipulated by the deep state, gravely comprised by scandals and corruption, who will do to the United States what George Mario Bergoglio is doing to the church, Prime Minister Conte of Italy. President Macron of President Macron to France, Prime Minister Sanchez to Spain, and so on. The blackmailable nature of Joe Biden, just like that of the just like that of the prelates of the Vatican's magical I'm sorry, magic circle, will expose him to be used unscrupulously, allowing illegitimate powers to interfere in both domestic politics as well as international balances. It is obvious that those who manipulate him already have someone worse than him or someone worse than him ready with whom they will replace him as soon as the opportunity arises. And yet in the midst of this bleak picture this apparently unstoppable advance of the invisible enemy an element of hope emerges. The adversary does not know how to love, and it does not understand that it is not enough to assure a universal, a universal income or to cancel mortgages in order to subjugate the masses and convince them to be branded like cattle. This people, which for too long has endured the abuses of a hateful and tyrannical power, this rediscovering that it has a soul, it is understanding that it is not willing to exchange its freedom for the harmonization, harmonization and cancellation of its identity. It is beginning to understand the value of familial and, society, and social ties, of the bonds of the faith and culture that unite honest people. This great reset is destined to fail because those who planned it do not understand that there are still people ready to take the, to the streets to defend their rights, to protect their loved ones, to give a future to their children and grandchildren. The leveling inhumanity of the globalist project will shatter miserably in the face of them, uh, in the face of the firm and courageous opposition of the children of light. The enemy has Satan on its side. He who only knows how to hate, but on our side, we have the Almighty Lord, the God of armies arrayed for battle, and the Most Holy Virgin, who will crush the head of the ancient serpent. If God is for us, who can be against us? Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. 
Mr. President, you are well aware that in this crucial hour, the United States of America is considered the defending wall against which the war declared by the advocates of globalism has been unleashed. Place your trust in the Lord, strengthened by the words of the Apostle Paul. All, wait, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. That's the book of the Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Uh, to be an instrument of divine province is a great responsibility for which you will certainly receive all the graces of state that you need. Since they are being fervently implored for you by the many people who support you with their prayers. With this heavenly hope and the assurance of my prayer for you, the First Lady, and for your collaborators, with all my heart I send you my blessings. God bless the United States. Carlo Maria Vigano, Archbishop of Upiana, former Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America. Okay. That was a long read. Did I skip a page? No, I didn't skip a page. I read it all. Okay. So, there it is, people. Um, I wanted to do a show maybe a couple weeks ago about about the um, the Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, the papacy. Um, I took a I, I took a philosophy. Uh, I'm sorry. I took a philosophy class a couple years ago in college, in junior college. You know, I tried to go back. I tried to go back to school, but I just couldn't finish it. But anyways, I, I took a philosophy class, and in that class, I had to write. I had to do a research paper, and I pretty much had the option on what I could write about. So I did a paper on the the Jesuits. And when I dug into these people, the Jesuits, they they use the name of Jesus to justify anything they do. They 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 commit crimes in the name of Jesus. And dude, let me tell you. Jesus is not down with committing crimes, no matter what. So it's it's really sickening to see that those people would use Jesus' name to do whatever they want. Let me take another swig. So, doing my research on the Jesuits, and I'll share that in another show, um... That led me to do more research about the Roman Catholic Church. And so I watched, there's a couple of people on YouTube that I like to watch. Um, I, I definitely love watching the Controversy 7. That is the man who baptized me to be Christian because I was a Roman Catholic, became a non-practicing non Roman Catholic, and then found my way back to Christ back in 2017, I want to say. And I just recently got baptized like two, three months ago by this man who, who, um, he runs the channel in YouTube called the controversy seven and through his, you know, he, he, he would explain, um, he would preach the word and, um, he's very articulate in, in, um, the Bible. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm still learning. I'm like in the beginning of stages of learning what's what in the Bible. And I'm trying to interpret things. Um, even though I should not try to interpret it with the human mind, I'm trying to figure out what what, what Jesus or God's telling me through Scripture. I'm, I'm trying to understand His language, which is why when I read it to you guys, I try to make my own conclusions, not because I'm trying to be like God. I'm trying to figure out what God is trying to tell me. And that's the same that's that's the same reason why I tell you to try to interpret that whatever message I read, I'm trying to tell you guys to interpret it in a way that applies to you, 
not because I want you to be of God. But I want you to do is I want you to I want you to understand that God's telling you something, and you need to try to understand what He's telling you. So that's the reason why I throw out scriptures to you in the beginning. And not only that, but um, originally I'm supposed to be spreading the word of the Lord. I, I know I mix it up with other stuff, but I mean that's part of trying to get people to listen to my show because you know even though even though I talk about all of these other things and I have this you know a, a virtual bar called the speak uneasy I, I also want to make it where it's it's a, it's a comfortable atmosphere that we can you know we're just like in a bar having hanging out and having drinks and just discussing so th you know that's that's why I threw all these ideas out and anyways I'm digressing. Um, so yeah, the reason why, um, where was I going with this? Oh, that's right. So I learned about the papacy, the, the Vatican. I learned that they are, <laughs> they are possibly the ones who are going to be the Antichrist. And to be honest, Probably a lot of you don't know it, but the Pope, the Pope answers to a, a, another Pope. And there's a Pope that's called the Black Pope that nobody knows about. Um, and that's part of like the Jesuit order. They have the, they have this certain pecking order. And um, the, the, um, the, the Pope, he answers to the Black Pope. And a lot of things about the, like, Vatican City, a lot of things, like, symbolic stuff. If you pull up pictures of, 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 of the Vatican, there's just a lot of creepy stuff there. You know, it's like ungodly stuff. So, you know, I wish I can do videos and show you guys, but there'll be, there will be a time where I can come on video but it's not going to be now it's not going to be it's not going to be any time in the near future but eventually i will when i'm done doing what i'm supposed to do as far as my job then i will present to you the speak uneasy the way it should be presented via video but for now this is the way i have to do it and god told me to spread the word and this is what i'm doing so I'm spreading it through podcast, but eventually it'll come to video. So hopefully that you guys stick around for that long, that amount of time and the speak uneasy will make better sense when video is implemented. But for now, this is the only way I can do it. So yeah, um, seems to me that um, Archbishop Vigano, he... He's trying to tell you people that people in the Vatican are not good. He's trying to... Ex I'm pretty sure the president knows already. He knows a lot of, about this kind of stuff. He has to, right? He's surrounded by a bunch of people who... He's got uh, the intelligence on these people, you know? He has access to this information. So I'm pretty sure he knows what's going on. And just because he's surrounded by all sorts of people doesn't necessarily mean that, excuse me, doesn't necessarily mean that he's surrounded by just swamp creatures. There are patriots and white hats in there too. It's a mix of people in there. There's double agents. There's, you know, there's, there's all sorts of people he's surrounded by. So, yeah, um, these are very exciting times. And when I saw this letter, man. I, I said, I'm glad that this is coming out from somebody who's who used to be in that in that within that community. But it seems to me that this guy is a good guy. So yeah. It's 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 it, that letter was a very interesting letter to read. And I don't think that's the first letter that he's ever sent to the president. I think he sent him another letter too. Oh, and in regards to the Great Reset, 
you people really need to do research on that because in a nutshell this is what okay in a nutshell the, this this would be this would be the great reset so the great reset would be all your debts will be wiped out so you have no debt and you own nothing and in order for that to happen you have to take these vaccinations and you pretty much have to be you know the new world orders bitch is pretty much what you got to be and you you're not you're not going to be allowed to own anything so it sounds like it sounds like they're trying to enslave us because i mean capitalism is a great thing the reason why is because the more you work the more the more the more hard work you do the more successful you become which means you gain more but if we live in a society where we are given everything the same i mean there is no advancement to humanity there's just no advancement we're all going to be the same i mean for lazy people that's great but i'm not lazy and i know a lot of conservatives out there, out there aren't lazy at all we try to work we try to we try to work for we try to put in quality work so we can gain more so you know we we all try to be successful and that's what advances that's what advances us as humans if we if we keep on doing more and working hard and gaining more we are able to even advance further out and faster if we have if we're able to make more money we're able to invest in more resources and just pushing everything forward right trying to make everything better as we go but in a society where where they're trying to push the new world order where we don't own anything <laughs> we we don't in that society we're pretty much not going to be able to own ourselves because they have control of what we how we live what we eat where where we live what we wear maybe what we think that's not the society that i want to live in and let me explain to you people you know how they say the silent majority or they they, they call this thing with the trump movement the silent majority well i'm not a big fan of being the silent majority because the majority was silent that this is why we are in the situation that we are in today because we chose to be silent for a long time without having to say anything as things were changing we can never be silent again because if we stay silent this is going to happen again. We can't let this happen again. This is bad. This is we 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 are at a point that it's really bad. And be, because people chose not to say anything. Because people were so passive, because people were too involved with what they had in their life. Now, my biggest thing about the truth about truth seeking is I want my kids to have a bright future. I don't want them to ever become enslaved. I want them to be free. But because of this silence that we've practiced for so many years, granted that I was probably guilty of that too, but at the same time, early back in 2006, when I woke up, I started, I started speaking to people about the, these things. And they used to call me crazy. They used to call me conspiracy theorists, just like what what um, Archbishop Vigano wrote in his letter. You're deemed as somebody who's irrelevant. It's it's you know you're, you're calling them crazy when they've done the research themselves. So now everything is coming into fruition that that I researched about. Now I'm not crazy anymore, but at the same time it's gotten to a point where it's gotten to a point where even just saying the wrong thing to some like not the wrong thing but even just saying something as simple as um 
I don't know, um, Blue Lives Matter, well, or um, Thin Blue Line, right? Now you're deemed as somebody who's racist. So we've gotten to this point because we were silent when it started becoming a problem. We need to, like, if, if Trump wins, if he wins, and all these swamp creatures are out, and all these bad people get justice, I really hope that we start to, you know, we, 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 I hope that we practice our First Amendment rights even more, because it's very relevant that we do. The longer we become silent, silent to one thing, the further out it's going to go, like the craziness, the further out it goes. And by that, by the time it gets to where we can't be silent no more, it'll be too late. So we can't be silent anymore about what we, you know, what we, what we want to say. We have to discuss these things. Sometimes it's not an easy discussion, but hey, uneasy discussions, you know, need, are, they need to be talked about because without those discussions, we can never advance as humans. The human race will never, ever advance if we don't share ideas, if we don't talk about our disagreements to try to work things out. And I'm, a, you know, I'm really big on that. I, I've had discussion, like normal conversations with liberals, you know, um, we disagree, but we respectfully disagree. You know, I, I say why I disagree. They say why they disagree. And it's just a normal conversation. We don't start calling each other racist or anything. Or sometimes we get enlightened by it. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Or, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So, uh, another topic that I wanted to touch on was, um, I think Trump was doing a rally. I want to say it was... Arizona, maybe. Um, he said something to the effect of people who burn the flags should go to prison for a year. And I know people are going to probably disagree with me on this. And I'm probably going to get some hate, maybe lose some listeners. Look, we live in a free country, right? Supposedly. I say supposedly because look, look what they're doing to us right now with this whole scamdemic thing, right? They're implementing all this shit to us and people are just going with it. I hate it. From day one when we were told to wear a mask, I hated it. I knew it was BS. I knew it was all about control. But anyways, my point that I'm trying to make here is that although... I stand up for the flag. I respect it. I know the me. I know the sim the symbolism of the flag. I know how much blood has been spilt on that for that flag, for what it stands for. I disagree with the statement that that um, President Trump made about sending people to prison for a year. And let me explain. We have the First Amendment right, which protects our speech, right? protects our freedoms of speech, press, expression, religion, and so on and so forth. Well, burning the, burning the American flag is a form of expression. We, this country is so free that you're free to express how stupid you are. And <laughs> although it sounds, although it sounds kind of crazy, that's, and, you know, we have, we have to, it's across the board. I mean, we, we can't, we can't limit freedom of speech, expression, press, religion to certain things. It's either all or nothing. And although I hate, I hate it when people burn the flag and it pisses me off, I agree that they shouldn't go to prison because... It, let them express how stupid they are. You know, these people don't even, re the people who burned the American flag, they don't even realize 
that the freedoms that we have are allowing them to do that with no repercussion. So they say they hate America and all this stuff, but you know what? If they were to go to another country, like a communist country, and they start speaking out against that government, they're going to disappear. They're either going to be permanently gone or they're going to be re-educated. So I really don't get these people who want to do that in the first place. And I mean, look, I love what this country represents. And I'm pretty sure you do too. But we can't selectively choose what freedom of speech is, what freedom of expression is. We can't choose. It's got to be all or nothing. So that's the point I wanted to make. So hopefully you guys voted already. Because if you try to vote tomorrow, it's going to be... It's going to be one hell of a, um, a trip to go vote tomorrow. But regardless, do your, do your duty. Unfortunately for me, I am not able to vote. The job I have here in California requires me to have a California driver's license. And I'm a resident of Texas. So I can't vote. I mean, I could vote, but it wouldn't be ethical. And I don't want to have to... I don't want to have to um, be unethical when I vote. I know where I stand with what I would have voted for, and I would do I would do every anything for this country, as much as this country has done so much, given me opportunity. I, I would stand up for what this country stands for. Not only for myself but for my family, but in particular, for my kids. So with that being said, the bar is now closed. It's more than a passing notion I've never fallen with such devotion I can't help but wonder If it's only a dream Am I naive again? believe that things are really as they seem Can anyone explain it How to understand what's true I know I just Whenever I'm with you I can't help but wonder If you wonder about me Cause lately I can't help but how wonderful this might be
Can anyone explain it? How to understand what's true? I know I just can't take it Whenever I Cause lately I can't help but wonder How wonderful this might be Cause lately I can't help 